So um, I'll do number four first of all. And what they're asking for number four, ladies and gentlemen, is t equals 3 pi over 4. So when doing a problem like this, um, they want us to evaluate for sine, cosine, and tangent. All right. The first thing, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll just break this out. And if you want to write this down or anything, if you're given an angle, the first thing we need to do is sketch the angle. We have to know where to sketch the angle. So to go back through, we go back to our coordinates, right? And I'll even draw a unit circle in here to kind of help us out. Now remember, when sketching an angle, that's the positive direction, that's the negative direction, right? Counterclockwise is positive, and clockwise is, is negative. Then we always start with our initial side. And what we're going to do is we're going to be rotating rays from that initial side. So we have rotate about our vertex, which is at the origin. Now, we've talked about a radian. And we said there's on the radians, there's pi radians halfway across the circle, right? And two pi radians, a whole revolution. So if I'm talking about 3 pi over 4, if I say you have 3 fourths of something, that's not a whole, right? That's 3 fourths, right? So what I need to do then is I'm going to take my denominator and break, because halfway around is a whole pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into fourths. Okay, and you kind of see how I took half the circle, I took the denominator, and I broke it into how many times we, we've divided, we've taken the denominator. Now, this is broken up into force. Well, if I want to see the rotation of rays of 3 fourths, I can say the rotation of 3 fourths is right there. All right? So therefore, that's now my terminal side. So I have my initial, and then I rotate to my terminal side. The next thing we need to do is determine, well, what's that point right there then? So we go to that as we go back to the unit circle that I told you guys you need to memorize. Yes? When you have an angle, you have an initial side and a terminal side. Our initial side in standard form is always on the x-axis. And we just rotate the other angle, which we call our terminal side. OK? Now, huh? It's always going to start when it's in standard form, yes. And we're, we're going to be drawing them always in standard form. Um, so therefore, that's our angle measurement. Now, when talking about the points on the unit circle, what I told you guys, there's kind of five major points that we had. And we had uh, this one is 1, 0, 0, 1. Those are the first two easy ones to remember. Then these other points, we'll talk about the angle point in a second. But you guys have three major points. Every single major point has a denominator of 2. Okay, And then to go back through to memorize the unit circle, it is square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3. Square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3. Now obviously we know that the square root of 1 is just 1, so we'll, re we'll get rid of the square root of 1 thing. And therefore, we just have those three points. Now, we do need to remember which point is which point. But um, uh, one thing I'm not going to be concerned about, I know that this is my 1 fourth. I know that this middle angle, let's all go through these things. This is pi over 6. Here is pi over 4. And here is my angle pi thirds. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm dealing with something that's in terms of force, right? Force. So therefore, this is going to be the point that I'm going to be dealing with. And if we look at how is this point, so I'm not at pi force, but now I'm at 3 pi over 4. Right? So if this is pi force, 2 pi force, 3 pi force. So then how is this point related to that point? Well, all it is, ladies and gentlemen, is just a reflection over the y-axis. So therefore, this is just negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. All right. So you just note, just taking what you know of the, the first quadrant of the unit circle, and then just reflect it to the second quadrant. Well, in the second quadrant, you just have the x coordinates are negative. So now I know my point is negative square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. And that's why I told you guys when I was giving out the answers what the point is. Because you first have to know how to graph it, how to sketch it. Then you have to know how to find the point. And now the third step is determining what is the sine of t, the cosine of t, and the tangent of t. So remember, the sine of t 
Does anybody remember my, my famous quote? The sine of t, we only know the sine of t is equal to y. Kyle, do you remember? There's something I really said. There's something I said all the time. Ava, do you remember? What was the question? I always said the sine of t equals y and when only what? Okay, so again, write this down if you do not ever have this down, okay? The sine of t is equal to y only when we have an angle that has a point on our unit circle, okay? So do we have, does this angle produce a point on the unit circle that we are aware of? Yes. Does this point have an x and a y coordinate? Yes. So therefore, it's just the y coordinate, square root of 2 over 2. That's it. Done. Sign. It's that. It's just the y coordinate. That only works when it's on the unit circle. Cosine of t equals x only when it's on the unit circle. So therefore, it's negative square root of 2 over 2. Tangent, y over x. So therefore, I have square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2, which equals negative 1. OK? And that's how you do that.